On to part three of the Math 095 review. Here we're solving the equation, the square root of 2x minus 5 equals 11. So this is one of those radical equations. Our strategy for these is isolate the radical, that is get it on one side by itself. And then we can, and this already is that way, so we don't, don't need to do anything about that. But then to undo the square root, we square both sides. So the square root of 2x minus 5 squared equals 11 squared. And squaring undoes the square root. So the square root squared would just be 2x minus 5. And on the other side, 11 squared is 121. Now finish solving, add 5 to both sides, and we get 2x equals 126. Divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 63. And that should be the solution. If you go back and check, 2 times 63 is 126, 126 minus 5 is 121, the square root of 121 does equal 11. Here we have a cube root, and we undo cube roots by cubing, by taking this to the third power. So if we take both sides to the third power, the cube root cubed would just be 4x. And negative 2 cubed that would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. Now divide both sides by 4, and we get x equals negative 2. And that does work, because 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and the cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2. And one more of these, the square root of x plus 1 minus 3 equals 2. Now here we do have to do something about isolating the radical. We need the square root by itself on one side before we do any squaring both sides. So the first thing I do is get rid of the minus 3 that's not under the square root sign by adding 3 to both sides. Then I get the square root of x plus 1 equals 5, and now I can undo the square root by squaring both sides. x plus 1 equals 25, subtract 1 on both sides, and x equals 24. So if x is 24, 24 plus 1 is 25, square root of 25 is 5, 5 minus 3 is 2. Next one. So this has to do with functions and function notation. We're given the function f of x equals 5x squared minus 3x plus 10. And first we're supposed to find f of 2. That is, we're supposed to evaluate this when we put 2 in in place of x. We're doing to 2 what this says to do to x. So we're calculating 5 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 10. And remember, powers come before multiplication. 2 squared is 4, and then 5 times 4 is 20. 3 times 2 would be 6. So 20 minus 6 is 14, plus 10 is 24. Then to find f of negative 1, here we're plugging negative 1 in for x. So 5 times negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 10. Again, square before you multiply. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Minus negative 3. Well, 5 minus negative 3 would be the same as 5 plus positive 3. That's 8. And then 8 plus 10 is 18. And then when it asks, what is the domain of this function? Remember what that means. The domain is all the numbers you're allowed to plug into the function. Everywhere the function is defined. So here, this function is defined for all real numbers. There's nothing that you can plug in and have it be undefined because there's nothing that would cause a division by zero error or anything like that. So if your function were a fractional expression, the domain would be everything except what would make the denominator zero. But here there's no, nothing like that to worry about. X can be anything. The domain is all real numbers. Draw the graph of the function f of x equals negative one-third x plus five. If you recognize this as a linear function, 
something in the form f of x or y equals mx plus b, then you know the graph is going to be a straight line with a slope of negative one-third and a y-intercept of five. So probably the easiest way to draw the graph is to start at the y-intercept up here at five on the y-axis and think from there, the rise over run is negative one over three. So if you go down one and over three, you get to another point on the line. And you can do that again, go down another space and over another three spaces and get to another point on the line. But that tells you what direction the line is going. Rise over run is negative one over three. So if you start at five on the y-axis, go down one and over three, that shows you how to draw the line. Now, write an equation for each straight line described below. Give your answer in function notation, and that just means our final answer should be f of x equals something. So on our way getting there, we might have a y involved, but if you get y equals something, just write it with an f of x instead of the y. So the first one is real easy if you know what you're doing. If you know the slope and the y-intercept, then right away we can just write an equation in slope-intercept form, mx plus b, where the number we're using for m is two-fifths, and the number we're using for b is negative six. So f of x equals two-fifths x minus six. The second one, they give us the slope and a point on the line, which is not the y-intercept. So we don't know the y-intercept, we don't know the b, but we do know that one of the points on the line is one negative nine. So this is the kind of situation where we can use point-slope form. Remember that's y minus y-coordinate of our point equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate of the point. So here the y-coordinate is negative nine, so we write y minus negative nine, or just y plus nine, equals the slope five times x minus the x-coordinate one. Now if we get the parentheses out of the way, multiply this out, it's y plus nine equals five x minus five. Then we can subtract nine on both sides, and we get y equals five x minus 14, and we wanted it in function notation, so instead of writing it with a y, I'll write it with an f of x. f of x equals 5x minus 14. And just to double check, if you take that formula and plug one in for x, so you're doing five times one minus 14, you do get negative nine for the y that goes along with x being one. C, here we're given two points and we want the line that passes through those two points. So the first thing we're gonna do is calculate the slope. The formula for the slope tells us to take y-coordinate minus y-coordinate on top over x-coordinate minus x-coordinate on the bottom. So if we do that with these two points, y-coordinate minus y-coordinate is one minus negative five. That would be the same as one plus five or six. And x-coordinate minus x-coordinate would be three minus four, which is negative one. And so we have six divided by negative one, which is negative six. So now we know the slope, negative six. And remember in the last problem, we had the slope and we had a point and we used point slope form. Well, here we have the slope and we have a point. Actually, we have two points, so we could use either one of them. But if I use the first one and put them into point slope form, it's y minus negative five, or just y plus five, equals the slope negative six times x minus four. Multiply out to get rid of the parentheses, you get y plus five equals negative six x plus 24. 
subtract 5 on both sides, you get y equals negative 6x plus 19. And then put an f of x in place of the y so that it's in function notation. And it says f of x equals negative 6x plus 19. Now we have some absolute value equations to solve. We want to get the absolute value part by itself on one side. So with number 25 here, to keep the absolute value here, but get rid of the plus 4, I subtract 4 on both sides. But then I notice that this kind of equation, where you've got an absolute value equal to a negative number, can never be true. That has no solutions because absolute value is never negative. Number 26, the absolute value is already by itself on one side. So the way we deal with this, it's equal to a positive number. So this has two possible solutions. One of them is just like this without the absolute value bars. 3x minus 1 equals 5. But the other possibility is that 3x minus 1 equals negative 5. So solve each one of those, and we get x equals 2, or x equals negative 4 thirds. So remember, with these absolute value equations, where the absolute value of some expression equals some positive number, there are two possibilities. One where the expression equals the positive number, one where the expression equals the negative of that number. Now we're doing inequalities. And here the directions say graph the solution and give it an interval notation. So 6x minus 7 is less than 8x plus 1. What I did was I subtracted 8x on both sides and I added 7 to both sides. So I got negative 2x is less than 8. And then I divided both sides by negative 2. But remember, with an inequality, when you divide both sides by a negative number, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality. So the inequality sign gets flipped around, and we get x is greater than negative 4. On the number line, that would be everything to the right of negative 4. If x is greater than negative 4, it's any of these numbers over here on the right side of negative 4. And as an interval, that would be the interval from negative 4 to infinity with round parentheses because we're not including the negative 4. We didn't say x could be equal to negative 4, just strictly greater than that. Now, this is one of those sort of three-sided inequalities. It says 5 is less than or equal to 4x minus 7 is less than 21. Now we want to get it so that just x is by itself in the middle, in between whatever two numbers we end up with. And we have to do the same thing to all three sides. So first I get rid of the minus 7 by adding plus 7 to all three sides. Then I have 12 is less than or equal to 4x is less than 28. Then, to get from 4x to x, I divide by 4 on all three sides, and I have 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 7. So here's what that looks like on the number line. I put a square bracket by the 3 because that is included. x could be equal to 3. I put a round parenthesis by the 7, because that's not included, x has to be strictly less than 7. So x can be any of these numbers between 3 and 7, greater than or equal to 3, but less than 7. And as an interval, it looks a lot like what the graph looks like. Bracket 3, 7, parenthesis. Everything starting at 3, up to but not including 7. Okay, that's it for this part. I'll be back in the next part with some more examples.